Hey everybody, welcome back to Art Unboxed. I'm Carla. Today we're gonna to use some ingredients that are really, really common in food distribution boxes or CSA boxes. Um, I received a box the, the other day. Uh, it was a box distributed for misplaced restaurant workers who have been out of work for about the past year, and I'm one of those people. Um, but I got a bunch of cool stuff in my box and it's also, it's very common stuff. So we got white potatoes, um, white onion as well, and then some apples. I received a block of butter and this block of cheese product. Um, these items I feel like are a staple in these boxes because they are sturdy ingredients. They travel well, they last a long time. They don't bruise easily. Um, they don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, so you see them a lot. So in all actuality, they can get a little boring after a while, or, you know, you need to really be creative to try to start, um, you know, finding something new to do with them. And that's what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to make a potato and apple quesadilla with caramelized onions. And then using just a few ingredients that I had from home, we're going to make a honey mustard dipping sauce for this. So let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to start with is the onions and we are caramelizing the onions because I really love that you can develop a super rich and deep flavor of an onion without adding any additional ingredients. I am going to use a little bit of butter just because I got it in my box and I have it, but if you don't, you don't actually have to use that. So uh, caramelizing does take a little bit of time. We're going to cut these onions thin to reduce that cooking time but again it does you know involve a little bit of time if you don't want to caramelize them you don't have to just dice them up saute them really quickly um, and they'll retain you know some crunch and still give you that great onion flavor so we're going to cut off that end there and cut this right down the middle in half and peel our onion i have a little discard bowl off to the side where i save uh, peels and skins and ends of of items and that's to be used to make stock later on to make a nice veggie stock okay i think onions are one of the most versatile ingredients out there besides the potato um i, I absolutely love the different ways that you can prepare onions so to cut down on time like i said we're gonna go thin and my favorite way to do that is what's called sicilier fancy term for cutting thin this way. You're following the natural striations and the natural ribs of the onion, just slicing through. And this is giving the onion pieces um, a largely exposed surface area. So they will uh, have a, a better connection with the pan and the heat and the cell walls will break down more quickly because they are being hit more. Another awesome thing about this dish is that we're just going to use one pan. We're just going to repeatedly use the same pan. Um, we're not even going to wash it in between. We'll just wipe it out and, and use just the one um, to cut down on dishes. All right, let's get that going. The thing about caramelized onions is that they cook down and all of a sudden you start it with a big pile of onions and now you just have what looks like nothing. Um, it's just kind of, it's kind of like spinach, but at the same time, that small pile of onions that you end up with have so much flavor and they're so rich, uh, and they actually go a really long way. If you are going to take the time to caramelize the onions for this, do a big batch. Um, I got a five pound bag of onions in my box and, you know, I would do if, I could do half of that because the caramelized onions last a really long time and you can add them to so many things. Whew. All right, I'm done cutting this onion just as my eyes start to water. So perfect timing. Um, like I said, I'm going to add a little bit of butter in like a medium sized skillet. This is all we need for everything. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of butter. I did receive a one pound block of butter in that box, which I thought was awesome. And I'm going to go onto a medium heat and put in all my onions. Yeah, those are perfect. Since they're so thin, they actually won't take a super long time. 
And you can take this to like however long you want. If you want a really deep, rich, caramely flavor, um, then, then let it go until they get super dark uh, and awesome looking. The caramelization of the onions just comes from their natural sugars. They grow underground, so they produce natural sugars so they can sort of like act as a food source for themselves. So they will, uh, that'll come out as the cell walls break down from the heat and then it'll start to brown and caramelize and give a whole bunch of flavor. So I'm gonna let that go for a while and we'll prep the other ingredients while these get going. Okay, you can hear our onions sizzling away. Um, they're just, I, I might adjust the heat to a little bit lower. We don't want them to burn. And since they're gonna be in there for a little while, we wanna make sure that just sort of like a very nice, even heat. We're gonna start with our potato next. And as you can see, I'm not gonna peel this potato. Um, the nutrients are in the skin. I just washed it really, really well. You don't need to peel it, the skin crisps crisp up and it's awesome, it gives them a really good texture. So we're just gonna break this down into a small dice. And you can really cut it kind of however you want, but I want like a nice little dice that's gonna get all kinds of crispy edges. So we'll start, I'm just gonna cut the ends off here. Put this to the side. And we're gonna make some planks. Like that. I do want a really small dice um, because that will help it get nice and crisp. So we're gonna cut off any parts that seem bad or inedible. That happens, it's okay. Just kinda add them to your stockpile and you're good to go. All right, after we do the planks, we will then do sticks. And this is basically the first thing you learn whenever you take a cooking class or go to culinary school, is how to break down something like a potato into very small pieces, All right? I'm going about this size because I wanna load up my quesadilla with nice crunchy little potato bits. Potatoes are so crazy versatile. There's like so many recipes out there for potatoes. But at the same time, like if you don't really know what to do with them and you keep getting them in your boxes, then they can get a little bit overwhelming. So we're trying something different today. Be careful when you stack them. They can, the starches within them can get a little slippery. Um, so just be as careful as you possibly can. There you go. And we're just going to put this off to the side. You don't want to do this too far in advance because the potatoes um, will oxidize and oxidization happens when the interior of a fruit or a vegetable is exposed to oxygen and then it starts to brown and it, it's still edible, but it doesn't look very appealing. Okay, my sticks aren't perfect and they don't have to be for cooking at home just for myself. So it's not like it has to be super perfect. But again, it is important to get them to be generally about the same size, so that way they cook evenly in our pan. All right, and now we're just gonna set these to the side. They'll be the next thing that gets cooked. And our apples are not getting cooked at all, but they are gonna be diced just like the potato. Let me show you where we're at with the onions, and then we'll move on. Okay. Here are our onions already getting some color. Um, some of them have gotten a little darker than I wanted because my heat was a little bit too high. So I turned the heat down and then I also added a splash of water just to cool the pan right away and then to help the onions cook down and soften just a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna work on our apples and you can use whatever apples you receive in your CSA box or whatever you have in the fridge. I get apples all the time from my daughter's lunch distribution and any kind of apple is great to use. Green would be really nice here. Um, just make sure they're washed. We're not gonna peel them because why make that extra step? Um, these are not gonna get cooked at all. We want that crunchy, um, juicy, crispy texture. So we're just gonna cut planks around the core and they're not gonna be even planks, and that's all right, we'll just work with it. Okay, 
we go. It might seem odd, but apples and potatoes and onions are really all very complementary to each other. Um, they each one, depending on how you cook it, depending on how you handle it, um, they just they can change shape and sort of, you know, make something totally new from just a regular old apple or potato or onion. All right. So we've made all sorts of different uh, shapes of plank here. And really all that's important is that we then go to sticks and then turn it again and go to a dice. About the same size as the potato. And we're just gonna put it to the side. We don't need to like put this in a bowl or anything like that. If you wanna do this in advance, I would say add some uh, water and lemon juice to a bowl Put your apples in there and that way they won't lose any texture and they won't oxidize just like the potatoes. But we're making this as quick as possible. So we're just gonna put everything to the side to assemble. You can make all of these ingredients ahead of time and then just store them in your fridge and just make quick quesadillas throughout the week. Um, it really works. Well, our onions are smelling amazing. When you're cooking them, just make sure, like after you stir them, to smooth them out so they're on one layer um, on the bottom of the pan so that their surface is like really maximized and uh, they can brown really well. So I'll finish up these apples and then grate some cheese. Um, and then we can start assembling. Be right back. Okay, so our, our onions have cooked down pretty well. They're nice and brown and see how much they've reduced. That's uh, another reason why you should make a nice big batch of these. There's a ton of flavor in them though, so you don't have to use a whole lot in your dish. So I'm gonna scrape this out. I'm not even gonna wipe out the pan, not even gonna clean it, nothing, cause we're just, you know, everything's going all in. The potatoes go in next, a nice sizzle, and just all at once is fine. They're cut nice and small, so they'll cook rather quickly um, in one layer. I am going to add a little bit of water and turn up the heat to sort of like medium high. The water will help them steam and soften. And then after the water evaporates, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil so they can start to get crispy on the outside. If you did not have tortillas at home, like the only thing that we're using from my home for this main part of it is the tortillas that I had in my fridge. If you didn't have tortillas, this would actually make an excellent hash right in the pan. You would add, after the potatoes started to crisp up, you would add everything else just right to the skillet and either let it cook on the stove top or bake it for like a nice hearty like potato hash pie type thing. I'm, I'm gonna season them. If you have seasonings, you should. Okay, if you have garlic salt, onion powder, things like that. This would be a great time to add them. Curry would be an excellent addition um, to this flavor profile here. Uh, chili powder, anything like that. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. My daughter's really picky, so I can't season things too much. So I just go kind of plain. I'm surprised that like sometimes I get away with black pepper. <laughs> All right, while those are steaming, I'm just going to grate up this cheese product. Um, I know it's a little, you know, is what it is, but it's handy and it was in our box. So we're going to use it. We don't want to waste any food. So I have this awesome little grater where it just grates right into the bowl. I don't need a big box grater. I don't need anything fancy. Uh, just going to do one of these. If you don't have anything to grate with, just chop it up. And honestly, this stuff is so soft. You could just rip it apart into chunks. So we're gonna get that going. Um, maybe your CSA box this week had sweet potatoes instead of regular potatoes. That would be a great substitute. 
And then there's also so many other things that you could add in here. Um, mushrooms instead of potatoes. Um, you could add in to this base recipe, you could add in some chopped bacon that's left over from breakfast. You could add some turkey deli meat. Um, you could, there's just so much. You could use whatever cheese you have on hand. And like I said, if you don't have tortillas, you could do a hash. So there's a ton of stuff that you can do with, with any type of quesadilla, really. Mushrooms are my favorite. So if I had any mushrooms, I would totally be adding mushrooms or substituting mushrooms for potatoes.